Hi, Buddy Lindsay here from GoJango.com. Today I want to talk to you about probably the most asked question in the Django community. How do I start learning Django? There's lots of resources out there. Uh, there's lots of confusion, you know, when you start trying to dig in and trying to figure out where to learn. There's just not a lot of guidance uh, on where to start. So with this video, I kind of wanted to give you a couple of bullet point places to start and then where to go to after you've started so that you can get a better experience of learning Django and getting familiar with Django. The first thing I recommend is start with the DjangoProject.com. I recommend getting on there, going through the multi-part tutorial on dealing with the polls application because it's going to run you through some of the basics of uh, Django and kind of touch a bunch of different stuff. You might not understand everything in it uh, when you go through it. I know I didn't. I kind of just did it and was like, okay, stuff is on the screen. It looks like what that does and yay. Uh, but what it does is it kind of gives you a little bit of familiarity with a bunch of different parts of the basics of Django. And when you're starting out, that that's kind of important. The next thing I recommend is potential of three different sites. You can either hit all three or you can uh, just stick with one. Uh, the first one is the Django Girls website. Uh, it's a great uh, website for a beginner-friendly tutorial to kind of run you through a bunch of different Django. Uh, the Tango with Django, I've not um, gone through this one very much. I've mostly just skimmed it, but I hear a lot of good things about it. And then the new uh, content that's out there by Mozilla on doing Django. Again, I've skimmed this one as well, and it seems pretty reasonable. After you've gone through or skimmed through those, uh, that's when I recommend you really pick up a book I feel like you get a lot more out of these books when you start with some online tutorials as your first place to kind of really scrape some code uh, onto the screen and you know get something interactive and do do a few things. I feel like you get a lot more out of the books because the, the online tutorials give you some muscle memory in dealing with Django and then the books will actually help connect dots of, of what things are there. And I'll leave a list of books that I like and uh, kind of their skill level that you need in, with, in the description. So you kind of have a place to go to. But the question is after that is once you've started with some online tutorials, you maybe picked up a book or two or three or four and you've kind of gone through them, it's like, okay, now I've done things that everyone else has done. How do I start doing my own thing? And how do I go to the next level in Django beyond you know the basics of what I've just done in the, in the books? Well, my recommendation is to do stuff. Just do, do random little projects. When I first was learning Django, uh, before I wiped my computer, you know, in a yearly wipe that I do, uh, I probably had over a hundred projects that literally did just one thing. Uh, I know when I was learning forms, I had three or four different projects and it was like, okay, I want to learn how to do model forms. Okay, now I want to learn how to do a form that's just normal. I want to learn how to customize, you know, the form. Uh, just different things with forms that I would do in different projects. I know that I did three or four different demo projects in learning the authentication system because they offer such a base amount of stuff with the built-in authentication stuff that you can mix and match things in different ways to get the experience that you want to go with. And then once I got familiar and comfortable with that, I did other projects still yet to go do third-party uh, Django applications to deal with authentication. And, and once I did all of these things, I got comfortable with how the authentication system works and I started realizing, okay, in this scenario I need to do this, in this scenario I need to do this. Um, but they really only came whenever I started, you know, just creating random demo projects uh, to do one particular thing and then never worrying about them again. It doesn't have to be this grand, cool application that I'm going to show off to the world and everyone's going to go ooh and ah about it. it it literally was some of the crappiest code you'll ever see because I was just trying to figure out how things work. And that's what I recommend that you do is just lots and lots and lots of stupid things and practice. And then one of these days, you're going to be doing stuff and you're going to be like, oh yeah, I remember doing this. And you just code it out. You're like, okay, now I need to do this. And you just code it out. And you're going to be like, okay, I want to create this particular project. And it's like, oh, well, I need the auth system. I have some models. I need to do a model form. Okay, um, I want a basic API. Okay, I'll go use Django REST framework for that. And uh, I need to do some background processes. Oh, I'll use Celery for that. And, you know, you've kind of built in, you know, some of these projects that you've done and you've got experience doing them. So you just start taking the experience that you've had and, like, add it to the project. And you have know, this other thing and you add it to this new project. And you take this thing that you thought of and learn and you add it to the project. And eventually you have your project. You have the application or the site that you've been working on and wanting to create for years. 
it just kind of comes together and you can think through how to actually accomplish it. So really, that's really kind of the trick to starting from nothing and going through to kind of getting to that next step of, of how do I become an experienced and good at uh, Django? How do I start down that path? So uh, one of the other questions that I get in email is where does Django, where does Go Django fit into all of this? And I like to say that it fits in with someone that has a little bit of experience with Django but is not a beginner. Uh, so if you have a little bit of experience with um, Django, then I recommend checking out my website, gojango.com, for online screencasts and tutorials. Uh, it definitely is more topical of, hey, I want to learn how to do the authentication system, I want to learn how to do celery, things like that. Another book that uh, people often recommend is Two Scoops of Django. And I really recommend that in the same vein. After you have a little bit of experience with Django, I recommend that you get Two Scoops of Django because it's a great resource for kind of idiomatic Django and, and things to do with Django that kind of the rest of the community has done. And if you stick with those patterns and practices and you go to a lot of other different projects, you'll see a lot of similarities. Um, it's probably the most popular book in uh, the Django community because it deals with uh, coding standards inside of Django. And I know a lot of people that have just been like, okay, we're going to adopt probably 80% of what this book says in dealing with uh, doing Django development. Finally, the last concern that I see a lot of people come up with when learning Django is what is the latest, what is the code that I should learn on and how do I find tutorials that cover the latest Django topics and the latest version of Django? Well, there's two answers to that. You can either use an LTS or long-term support. That's a, that's a part of Django that is going to be supported officially for a long period of time, um, longer than the six or eight month release cycle uh, that Django goes through currently. So it's gonna last through like three release cycles until the next long-term support. Then there is the latest tagged version that you can do of Django. So uh, if you have 1.10, you know, that's the latest tagged version. So you would learn on 1.10 or you can learn on master on GitHub and just pull that down and start playing with it. I don't recommend when you're beginning to just check out master and start doing stuff. It's generally not in the most stable of states, depending on the part of the release cycle you're dealing with in Django and can lead to a lot of confusion. So I recommend you start with a long-term support version or you stick with a latest tagged version of Django by just doing like a pip install Django. And whatever version that gives you, that's the version you learn on. Now, one of the concerns I see a lot of people ask is, where do I find tutorials about the absolute latest version of, uh, of Django? And the answer is you're not necessarily going to find the latest version of Django tutorials recovering the latest version of Django, and that's okay. Uh, a lot of Django stays stable for a really long time. Django Forms, for example, has stayed stable for a really long time, and tutorials from Django 1.3 still work today in a lot of cases. There's some, you know, there's added features in there, um, but for the most part, form code that was written in 1.3 can still work in Django 1.10 now. Um, so I, I recommend, you know, not necessarily worrying about, you know, how old the Django project is or the Django tutorial is for the current Django uh, code base, but going ahead and trying it. And if it doesn't work, you know, hey, this doesn't work. And then I recommend actually kind of digging in and seeing if you can figure out why it doesn't work and actually getting it to work. If it's a little above your skill level at the moment with Django, scrap it and go find another tutorial. Uh, along the way, you're going to learn extra stuff, and you'll be surprised at how often older tutorials still work with new code bases. So, um, after having experience learning Django and dealing with Django, uh, I, I do recommend not being afraid of older versions of Django tutorials. Uh, now, if you're going through something and the entire tutorial is based in you know, Django 1.1 and we're on 1.10 now, um, you're going to run into a lot of problems. But if you're on 110 now and you're dealing with 1.7, you know, most everything is going to still work. Uh, so kind of, kind of be a little bit, you know, cognizant of that, of, of how old, old it is. But, you know, if it's a few versions old, you're going to be fine, usually. So with that, thank you for watching. Um, I'll leave some uh, details in the description for uh, things that you can find and resources to look up. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you like this video and like more, 
please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd also ask that you go ahead and leave some comments of some Django resources that you like yourselves and it really helped you whenever you were starting to learn uh, how to work with Django. I thank you for your time and have a great day.